All right, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to tackle integrals on our calculator. So again, this is why this calculator costs a bunch of money. Um, the goal here, what we're driving towards, is sort of mixed AP style questions where you have to find an integral or a derivative on your calculator, um, and you have to decide what you're finding, because that's really the smart human thing that we want you to be able to do, is figure out how to tell your calculator to get the answer to your question based on what the question is asking you, right? Um, so you're not just typing these in like a robot. Um, you're going to have to do a little bit of analysis to figure out what you need, okay? Um, if you haven't done the derivatives on a calculator lesson from the previous set of lessons yet, it would be great to do that first. Um, so if that is you, go back and do that now and then come back and see me in this video when you've done that. Uh, otherwise, we'll just jump in. So I'm going to show you how to find integrals first, and then we'll do a couple of problems. So integrals live in math right next to derivatives. Makes sense, right? So fn int. So math 9 is what we want. Okay. We'll make this a little smaller so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to hit enter. And then it gives us exactly what we'd expect to see. So I don't know. I'm just going to go from 1 to five, so you're gonna put in your bounds, upper bound, lower bound. X, well, let's actually make this one super clear. So I'm just gonna do the integral of the function two, right? So this is a horizontal line. So if you think about it, this integral that I'm typing in is a two by four rectangle, so this should spit out eight. Um, the last thing is integrate with respect to X. So for our purposes in AP Calc, it's always gonna be DX at the end. Okay, so that's how you type it in. It's pretty intuitive. It's more intuitive than the derivative view. And you're going to hit enter, and indeed it gives me 8. Um, so those are the steps. Again, it's math, and then fn int number 9, and then you type in exactly kind of what you'd want, how we'd expect it. Okay. So let's try some problems. That's pretty easy, right? And then we can we can tackle some more interesting things here in a second. So here are your keystrokes. Here are what our problems are going to look like. Okay, so these are initial value problems or initial condition problems. There's a couple different ways we can tackle this. So take a second to read it. I'm going to give you what I think is the easiest way, um, given that we're going to use our calculator to solve these integrals. So I think the easiest way is to set it up like this. Say f of 5 is going to be equal to f of negative 2 plus the total change from negative 2 to 5 of the function. Okay, So this integral represents the total change from negative 2 to 5. So we've done this before, just not with a calculator. Okay. So that, I think, is the easiest way to set this up. So I'm going to take my initial condition, and I'm going to add the integral. So I'm going to just make a note here. I'm not going to rewrite the whole thing. That this is 7. Negative 7. Okay. Then on my cal All right, so on my calculator, I'm going to go math. Actually, before that, I'm going to type in my negative 7. So I'm going to say negative 7 plus math. And then I'm going to type in my integral. So fn int is what I need from negative 2 to 5. And then I'm going to type in the function that gives us, so x to the third sine of 2x plus 4. And that's not even a function we could integrate based on our present integration skills without this calculator. And then dx I need to put in. Otherwise, your calculator won't know what variable to reference. And then I hit enter, cross my fingers, let it think a little bit, and I get... 0.669, and that's just my answer. I'm going to round to three decimal places as we always do in AP Calculus. So I'm going to say that um, f of 5 about equals 0.669. And that's it. So I want to do one more just to acknowledge that there's a different case that we can run into. So this one is really similar. We want f of negative 3. And we're given f of 4. 
Okay, so notice the difference. We have f of negative 3 is what we're looking for, and 4 is to the right of it, right? Here, we have f of 5 is what we're looking for, and we're given f of negative 2, which is to the left. Okay, so what you want is for the upper bound of your integral to be what you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to do essentially a backwards integral. So I'm going to say f of negative 3 equals negative 9 plus the integral, the total change between 4 and negative 3. Okay, so notice my bigger number goes on top, or sorry, my bigger number is on the bottom, which is the opposite of what we usually want. And what I'm trying to get to goes on top. So this integral essentially reads from right to left instead of left to right. What we have done in the past is we've re rewritten it, right? So we'd say negative. You can't do that if you want, but your calculator is actually smart enough to just ignore that. Okay. So I can actually type it in exactly as I see it, and it'll work out just fine. So I'm working on getting this typed in here. So I took my initial condition. I wrote my bounds exactly as I see as I wrote them originally. I did not rewrite. And I typed in dx, so I just type in my function now. So my function, or my derivative rather, I guess, x squared and cosine of 2x minus 5. Okay. And let it think some. We get negative 3.87. So that is about equal to half of 3. So no need to rewrite these, but you do have to write them in the correct order. And if you're getting these wrong, this is probably why. So notice what I'm looking for goes on top here in both cases.